if I'm ever feeling like the sad, depressed, or tired, like I just go out for a run. I go, I go do something, whether it's a 5K, a 1K, one mile or half a mile, like it doesn't really matter. Just getting out there moving clears all those other thoughts in your heads and just makes it so much better. So here's the thing, if you're trying to find your style in tattooing or your thing in life, um, I'll tell you a bit about my story. Uh, my name's Andy Foe. I'm a tattoo artist out here in Austin, Texas. I own a tattoo shop called Upside Tattoo. Um, and for me, like I've always been drawn to art, but it hasn't always been that way. Somebody had to introduce it to me. Um, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, and my sister came back from school. My sister Jane is four years older than me. Um, I was four years old at the time. She was eight and she came back from school. I wasn't in school yet. And she said, sit right there. So I sat on the floor. She turned to me and she just sat down with a pencil and paper and just started to draw in front of me. I was kind of curious. She didn't let me look. She just told me to sit still. And I don't remember how long it was, a couple minutes. But for an eight-year-old to turn that piece of paper towards a four-year-old me and see a resemblance of myself, I was like, I didn't know you could do that with a pencil and a piece of paper. And I was just fascinated by that. So when I entered into kindergarten, uh, we had art class every week and I just like took off with it. I just it didn't matter. Like I didn't know the difference between good or bad art. It was just, you got to create. And I just had so much fun in it. Um, that I didn't really care what it looked like or what the other kids were doing. Uh, I ended up excelling at it because it was just something that I was really passionate about. And the same thing carried all throughout elementary school. Uh, when you're in Brooklyn or New York City and you're about like fourth or fifth grade, they give you like a textbook size this big uh, to pick your middle school. So you either go to your zone school, whatever is in your area, or you get to pick based on what you like. And I remember going to decide either my zone school or uh, Mark Twain. Mark Twain was like a gifted school for music or uh, art, you know, one of those programs. And I was like, man, like art would be really cool, but all my friends are going here towards the zone school. I'll just go to my zone school. So I chose what I liked, you know, it wasn't necessarily art, but I chose to go where my friends went because that's what I liked at the time. Uh, and, you know, you go through fifth grade, sixth grade, uh, sorry, sixth, seventh, then during seventh grade, they give you an even bigger textbook. Choose your high school in New York City. So I just remembered like looking through all the schools. And at the time I was living in Flatbush, um, not a really good area. I was on Church and Ocean Avenue, the Q train on Church Ave. And it was either go to my zone school of Erasmus, which had uh, metal detectors and armed security guards, or you could pick between all these other schools. So. I was always told my family, you know, you couldn't make any money doing art. There's no careers, there's no livings for it. So just do something practical. What I liked at the time uh, was like computers. You know, like I've always, we got our first Dell, which had like 20 gigabytes. The monitor was like this big, it was super heavy. And um, we are using, you know, floppy disks at the time. And I just remember choosing FDR High School, which had like computer and a business program. My dad was an entrepreneur. Um, didn't really work out later on in his life, but he instilled, you know, some ideas of like doing some sort of business for yourself, go for computer science, something practical. Um, and then there was Sheepshead Bay High School, also not really a good school, but they had a really good art program. So I applied for both. Um, FDR had a business test, a business program. I signed up for it. I passed the test. And then also it came to Sheepshead Bay. I had to audition for them. So I had to create a portfolio with my art teacher in, uh, in, uh, middle school and you got to go sit there and draw with them for an hour and they would just guide your uh critique your portfolio and then just see the type of artwork that you did and i got into both schools which one did i choose you know you have to choose which one you like my liking was towards um, fdr for the business program because i liked the safety the security of going for something that was more practical um so I ended up going for there. I pushed art to the side again because uh, I was just doing something that I liked at the time. And that's where uh, I ended up going to school and learning all these different things with business, uh, accounting and uh, LLCs and S Corps and uh, sole proprietorships, all those things. Like I, I had a head start at that at um, this business school. Um, that's actually where I met 
my girlfriend at the time, which is now my wife at the time, Erica. Um, so when you're just about to graduate high school, guess what happens? Choose your college or whatever your thing is. And you can only imagine, now it's not even just limited to like your city or to your state, it's all over the place. But I like the idea of being in New York. I like the idea of doing art again, like my guidance counselor helped, you know, push me around and see which, uh, which route I wanted to go. With that, it was Parsons and SVA, or I could probably do what my sister loves. Like she loves her job, uh, my sister Terry. Um, she was an electrical engineer. She has a mechanical nuclear, um, mechanical engineering degree, her nuclear engineering degree. She loved her job so much, she was so passionate. I wanted to be just like her because she loved her job. So I didn't even apply to the art schools. I was like, I'm gonna follow the path of somebody who loves what they wanna do. So I applied for NYIT, the New York Institute of Technology. I went there uh, and for two years, you do your core classes with your core classes is your philosophy, your English, your uh, algebra, all the other things I didn't care about. By year three, private school, I finally got into electrical engineering degree and I had no idea what was going on. I loved the idea of what my sister did and what she loved about it, even though I had no idea, but I hated what they were actually doing in the field. I just couldn't keep up. My brain doesn't function that way. Uh, I dropped out after three years. I was working at Forever 21 at the time and I was like, I might as well just do the retail management thing. And I was going to crush that because I liked the idea of having some sort of security. But with some time, I was like, you know what? Let me go to a community college. I went to BMCC, Borough of Manhattan Community College. And let me just figure out something to do. So I went for graphic design. I was blending art with computers, with the internet, the thing that I, I loved at the time around, you know, early 2000s or so. And the graphic design program had art electives, drawing, painting, sculpting. I had Parsons and SBA professors teaching there at a community college part-time and they saw my passion for it. I thrived just like I did in kindergarten and they just nurtured me and nurtured me and they're like, you have to do something with this. And I ended up working at Uniqlo for a little bit. It's like a Japanese version, Japanese retailer clothing company, like kind of like the Gap, I think it's better. I just like the, the clothing there. And um, man, I just remember like on a lunch break, hating my job, hating working with other people who hated their job. I was on lunch break at the park in uh, Grand Street in New York City. Had some friends playing handball there and um, one of my cousins was there and they were showing off tattoos to each other of like, trash work that they were like, you know, just doing. I, I just seen better because I knew my brother, Robert Foe, uh, who owns Skin Design Tattoos. He's been tattooing since I was one years old. Uh, I was 22 at the time. So he's been tattooing for 23 years. Uh, oh, sorry, 21 years at the time. And I was just on, I asked my cousin, I was like, would you let me tattoo you? And I don't know if I took it as a challenge, but he was like, only if you get good. So I asked my brother, Robert, I was like, what do you think if I tattooed? And he was like, if you move out here to Vegas, I'll teach you. And I came out there for a week to see what it was like. My brother loved his work. Like he was gardening, he had a family, you know, he was just doing all these things that I thought an artist did. He had a giant library, he had an art studio. Like, you know, I just saw that energy, that passion. I was like, I wanna be like him. You know, to have that flexibility to just like, Wake up when you like, go to work, come home, hang out with your family, have your day off, tend to your garden, make your koi pond, like all these things like that he was gonna teach me. I was like, man, like this is so awesome. And I saw that people were like giving their arms, their full bodies to him to just like do whatever you wanted. And it was in realism, it was like black and gay realism. And I was like, I need to do something with this. Like, so that's what I liked. That's what I was pushing for. And I was like, this is it. This is what I wanted to do. So when it comes down to finding your thing in life, it's a, it's a mixture of like what you like, what you don't like, and just moving towards it. 
I can't believe like this is where I'm at right now. 11 years in tattooing. Um, and still, I'm figuring out what I like and what I don't like. You know, even when it comes to the little nuances of like the stencil machines that I'm using or the tattoo machines or the needles. Um, when it comes down to like the music and the environment and the amount of days off. Um, and even to like, it extends to like how I work out, you know, what kind of running shoes, what kind of watch, like when you can start to pick apart all those little nuances of like what you like and what you don't like, then you get into a rhythm of like really finding yourself. And the same thing applies in your style of tattooing. What do you like about this tattoo artist's work? What don't you like about that? What do you like about this person's social media? What don't you like about that person's work? And as you begin to dissect that, you find more of what you like, what your thing, what your style is. And that thing is just very special, very unique to you. It's your experience, it's your personality, it's what you get to deliver and offer to the world as a tattooer and as a person. So I encourage you, I suggest, I highly recommend you start to look at everything in your life and figure out what is it about this that you like or that you don't like. And when you begin to identify those things, you find more of you. I want to know like what you have figured out at this point or where you're stuck finding your thing or your style. It's not difficult, but it takes time. So find some time to like get a journal, write it down, send me a DM, like let's figure that out, you know, figure out what it is that you like and take more action to move towards that. You're going to be way happier. You're going to find so much more fulfillment. My thing now is like helping everyone else find their thing, helping people in tattooing, get their skill set honed, get their mindset right, get their bodies right, so that when you do wear a tattoo, it looks awesome. When you do go meet somebody, like your energy is like out there. When you have a family, like you're there to like love them and be present. Let me help you figure that out. Send me a message or, you know, put in the comments below. I'd really love to be able to like hear more about your story. Have a great day, everybody.